Welcome, welcome. Tea and turnips, which is simply ro roasted root vegetables, and tikka masala, a chicken dish, an Indian chicken dish with a tikka masala sauce that you could drink by the cupful. It's a tomato cream sauce. It's the most pop, well, mo United States most pos popular. This old mouth doesn't always cooperate. <laughs> Indian dish at an Indian restaurant. My sous chef today is Kurt Brower. He's another county board supervisor of Sheboygan. Where in Sheboygan? District 10, which is the most southern portion of the city of Sheboygan. So he's probably one. There might be a few of you here. Yes, yeah. in District yeah. 10. I'm a county board supervisor also District 4, which is close to Washington School and Ann Park. I'm a new person on the county board. Kurt's been there and he knows a lot of stuff. So when I have a question, which is often, he helps me out. He's also the head of the electrical union. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so <laughs> we won't die of electrocution today. He'll make sure. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt, for being here. Marilyn sells herself short. We all know Marilyn was, how many years were you on the city council? I don't know. It was 30 years ago, but it was many, it was a while many ago. terms. Yeah. yeah, and she is a, your true asset to the county board. She represents her district quite well. It's very knowledgeable. Um, always a pleasure to have her. Brings a wonderful perspective to the county board. So. What a smart man he is. <laughs> did I get that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> And we have Judy Clark helping us today. By the way, all of these aprons were made from my mother's tablecloths. Oh. Yes, yes, and they go over the shoulders, which you know is so much more comfortable than around the neck. Yes. Janet Ray is going to talk to us about tea. She's our first presenter today. Peg Watson, who I often call Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Snow. It, Took a day off from work to come here. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. It'll be the th almost last Friday in March. Okay. And that will be when Irish eyes are smiling. Ooh. And of course, Francois Pietzner, who has <coughs> helped do cooking classes forever. For, forever at the old place, <laughs> at the new place. Yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you and thank you. I could not do it without them. Don't and of Oh yeah, that's coming next. And of course, the table, Anne Craft. Hey, 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 Anne Craft. What? Oh, that's right. Do you see? It's Anne's birthday today. Oh, we must sing happy birthday. She brought um, cupcakes from Johnston Bakery because Mary Ann Pearl is a great um, volunteer here and she was a Johnston. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, the teacups. Some are mine, some belong to Noreen, some belong to Janet Ray, and if you break one, eh. That's <laughs> just. Do my grandchildren want them? Probably not. <laughs> I think you're right. Yes, yes. There's lots of tea bags on the table, varieties of flavors. You know, choose your favorite. And at the end of the class, if there are still tea bags on the table, take them home so that they're gone. My daughter gave to me a hundred different flavors at Christmas. Our other daughter sent 24 because she knew the class was coming, so you can thank my two daughters. <laughs> thank you, Diane. Thank you, Karen. Janet Ray will start talking about tea. There is six different types. And this is tea tea, not herbs. Yeah, no, this is tea. There are six types of tea made, and they are white, green, yellow, oolong, black, and uh-huh, 
I don't know what that word is. I can't pronounce it. It's I don't know. Poor. 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 P U dash E R H. Call it poor. <laughs> so Close those enough. are the different types of tea. And what makes the particular type of tea is the processing of it, the oxidization of it. And that's what gives you the strength of your tea from grain down the line. So white tea is uh, the least processed. It comes from the tiny little tea buds and the tea leaves when they first start blooming. And it's usually right after Christmas, after, or right after winter, they start sprouting. And they have little gray hairs on them. Wow. And they pick that. And then they oxidize that by, they smash the leaves and let them dry. And that causes the oxidization of them. So those are the early, 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 and that's why their color is so light and their taste is so very light. That is the lightest tea that they have. Uh, white tea is um, the least processed of the regular teas. Um, made from, oh, that's white tea, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You did it, yeah. Anyway, green tea is processed with the leaves uh, that are withered and then they're steamed. And um, there again, green tea is not Chinese. It is produced mainly in Japan. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oolong. Mm -hmm. I love Oolan. Mm -hmm. Marilyn yep. loves Oolan. Yep. Um, it's a traditional Chinese tea known for its complex flavors. It can run from green to a dark red tea to black. So it's all in that processing and that oxidization of these tea leaves. And then black tea is the most familiar in the Western countries because it accepts milk and sugar the easiest. And that's why a lot of the tea parties offer black tea. Hmm. And herbal tea is not tea. <laughs> it is just what it says. It's herbs. It's infused herbs that are made to look like tea, mm -hmm. like your chamomile. Sure. Chamomile is the number one herbal tea. And then they add peppermint extract or orange extract, or you'll have uh, rose buds. Oh, and it makes it pink. Yes. Yes, hibiscus, right. Yeah. And you have all these different herbs that are just dried and then steeped in your hot water like your regular tea. Now, Marilyn has this, I have this. Back on that end table, I have a special teapot, and it's like a Japanese teapot, and you take one of these little buds, and she's got them over there, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, you take these little buds, and they're called blooming tea flowers. They're actually herbs. And there's the teapot, the little teapot. And you put hot water in there. And supposedly, you drop this in, and it blooms into this beautiful flower. Mine never worked. <laughs> I have tried putting them in the hot water. I've tried pouring the hot water over the top. But for some reason, mine never open up. They just kind of lay <coughs> there. So I don't know. Maybe they're old. I don't know. So this, of course, is your typical. You put your tea in there. You put it in your hot water. It's your infuser. A big pot. Yeah, a big pot. This is for 
your individual cups and your small pots. And this is, I think they're tea buds. Yeah, little, and they smell like tea. Mm -hmm. Little, and then she, Marilyn has over there a blue ox one, and that one is herbal with black tea mixed with it, but it will turn blue. Oh, so we'll have blue water, yes. all right. And blue stains on our teeth. Yes. <laughs> rather than dark brown. Right, right, right. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much. You did that work. Thank you. All right. Tikka masala. You have your recipes and mix together. Well, I, I left the yogurt in the refrigerator in the little kitchen, of course. And a little, could you walk to the kitchen and there's a container of yogurt. I will go and get it. Thank you. Thank you. And some oil. And of course, grated fresh ginger straight out of the squeeze bottle. Whoops. Or you can grate fresh ginger. Of course you can. And garlic, fresh squeezed garlic or straight out of the jar. As I say, the garlic police and the ginger police will not come to your kitchen. <laughs> Some cumin, um, cumin, cumin, don't have it here. We'll put that, we'll pretend, and the cayenne, and the chicken, which is also up there in the kitchen with the, uh, Terry, can you go, there's a l few little pieces of cut up chicken raw in the refrigerator. Thank you. Mix that together. Now, when I made the tikka masala, I went a step further and I added the garam masala to the raw chicken, let it sit overnight, and then sauteed it, and then put it in the masala sauce. Next on your recipe is the sauce, and it calls for the garam masala, which is hard to find. So I will give you a recipe for homemade garam masala. But garam masala is an herb mixture that every family tweaks to their own taste. So it is not etched in stone by any means. Thank you. Two tablespoons black pepper, two tablespoons cumin, half teaspoon clove, two tablespoons cardamom, one and one half teaspoon cinnamon, one and one half teaspoons coriander, and one teaspoon nutmeg. Now, if you want to do it from scratch, you can use a, I'll let you grind. I'll put the spices in here. Okay. <laughs> this I purchased when Lee and I were first married because I would make the salsa in here. It's a Mexican mortar and pestle called molcajete. So the molcajete is going to be used for Indian cooking today. All right. All right. So you can do this at home if you want to. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, black pepper. Okay. Which is already ground. But here's some. Oh, we could grind some up. Yep, sure. here's some. Oh, that's right. Here's some black pepper. If you want to take some black peppercorns home with you, feel free. Cumin, I don't have here. Cardamom. Which sort of tastes like nut, like fruity nutmeg? Is that two tablespoons? Cardamom, two tablespoons, right. Cinnamon, of course, I forgot to bring a cinnamon stick. Now I want to see Kurt work this oh, nutmeg. Oh, not the nutmeg, no. <laughs> now, this beat up old gadget has this in there and Nuts it actually yep. works. It works sure does. quite well. Let's see if Kurt can crack this baby. Oh, come on. 
You really want me to crack that? Sure, sure, if you can, right. Oh my God, I don't know. It's gonna probably fly out in the audience and, here. And you don't have to. It's it's nutmeg, so it's, there you got it. Oh, he's got it, yes. Okay, so you want this all ground up now? Sure, okay. well, and you certainly may do this at home if you want to, or you can buy this, or you can make this. Okay. Well, we that looks sure. very nice, and that, what, Smells good. what rock is this? Granite. Granite, yeah. The granite against the granite really does grind mortar, well. Mortar and pestle, right? Yep, that's it. Or at Nuevo Laredo, it's a mulcajete. Yeah. Farm, every pharmacist had one of these, right? That's right. Well, I bet they don't anymore. <laughs> I sure hope. Yeah. Oh, they still might? Okay. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Good. There. All right. So, let's turn on this baby. It says on, off. It's on. Okay. It's a... Induction. Induction. So that means it heats up the pan but isn't hot? Yep. Isn't that what it means? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, knowing electricity, would know that. No, I just watch cooking shows. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> my wife makes me watch cooking okay. shows. Okay, all right. Let's put some oil in there. No, I like watching those shows. Let's put some garam masala in there. Jalapeno I have here. And I cut this in half like this. And then take out the seeds. Because that's where the heat is, right? Yep, that's the heat. I don't need the seeds. And my husband cut down a little paring knife for me. And it is very useful to be that. It works so smoothly. Oh, yeah. Was also used from a Jewish brisk, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. And I worked at the synagogue a long time. But when I started working there 35, 40 years ago, there was probably only one or two bris. Everybody else had grown and moved away from Sheboygan. Yeah. Because I, of that knife. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but this kind of a knife works better for the chopping. I, Calls for the jalapeno, right? Um, jalapeno. Yep, one chopped jalapeno. Okay, I'm not going to do a whole one. Yeah. This is demo. When you get to eat, there will be whole ones in there, but it is not spicy. It just adds flavor. Just flavor. flavor. What's next, my dear? Uh, we got uh, 28 ounces of canned crushed tomatoes. And I have tomato paste. Well, we have paste too. One teaspoon. Or tablespoon of tomato paste. Well, I think we'll use all of this then instead of uh, using the crushed tomatoes. Terry, can you go to the refrigerator and get that little bit of wine? Okay. A bottle. There's not much left in the bottle. We'll put it in Why here. is that? No, they've been using it. Okay. <laughs> it was spray. full before when I got here. <laughs> uh, let's see if we have rubber Spoon scraper. Here? That'll, Will that work? I'm going to get this rubber scraper. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Thank you. That's exactly what I needed. That's, here, Kurt, I'll let you put that in there. Sure. Here, I'll put this here for you. Yep, and let's see what else. And sugar, and remember why we add sugar? Not necessarily to make it sweet, enhance the flavor. Kind of like salt. And then salt. We'll have to pretend we have salt. Oh, come on. Salt of the earth. you got to have salt. That's right. right. And on the edge of there, let's put the uh, cut up chicken. I didn't think I had to demonstrate how to cut up chicken. You've probably done that hundreds of times. I cringed a little bit when she said sugar. Because my father's side of the family were all Germans, so we didn't put sugar in anything. Anything. She drank the rest. No, no. 
But fortunately, my mom's side of the family were German Russians. So they were known for eat, putting sugar in everything. So. All right. So this is replacing the water that would have been in the canned tomatoes. Okay. So you can use to paste and liquid, or you can use the canned tomatoes. It will turn out similar. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And of course we have our wonderful cilantro. Some people hate it. I love it. Yes. Say that again. It's like soap. Soap. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think if it tastes like soap to you, it truly does. It's your taste buds in your mouth. When I have the family on Sunday noon to come and eat, my daughter-in-law and one grandson must be super tasters. They must have extra taste buds. They taste things more sour, more sweet, more hot than the rest of us at the table. And it's just the way their mouth grew. You know who hated cilantro? Was a chef, Julia Childs. Did she? Couldn't stand it. Yeah. And pro I'll bet you're right. Yeah, yes. that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And when she did that, remember she did a series with Jacques Papanolis? Oh, yes. Yeah. He loved using it, and she detested it. And I'm sure they kind of poked each other about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. She was uh, just, and then, like you say, it's soap. If you don't like it, it tastes like soap. Okay. So anyway, that's the chicken tikka masala. Okay. And then, of course, because to make it taste even better, well, look who's here. The Mayor, Mayor Shorten. Hey, hey, nice to see He's you. He's come to relieve me. He's come to relieve me. I heard, I heard Kurt Brown was cooking today. So <laughs> this sauce magic is the fact that it's tomato and cream and some se seasoning. The tomato and cream makes it really delicious. And is that heavy cream? Oh yeah. For my cooking class, yes, it's heavy cream. Real heavy cream. Somebody said to me yesterday, here, or the day before, that they now put cream on their Cheerios in the morning. And I said, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Not skim milk. Ugh. By the time you're in your mid 80s, you go with cream. <laughs> Just want to mention, last night we had our chamber gala out at the Osthof, and City of Sheboygan was awarded with the... The Tourism Gem of the Year Award. Yeah. Say that again. I've got a microphone. The, the Tourism Gem of the Year Award. And, and why was that? Gem of the Year, yes, Sheboygan. Yeah, for, for, for tourism, primarily for the boat race that we had last summer. Oh, yeah. And we're getting that again, right? We're getting that again. And is it going to be bigger? Be bigger. Last year we had 28 boats. This year we're going to have 70 boats. Wow. Holy oh, moly. It's going to be more than double. So. Roasted root vegetables. Turn up. Varieties of potatoes. But real ones. Sorry. That wasn't like the egg. No, it wasn't Don't worry like about the egg. that one. Yeah. Thank, thank you. And when I said to Kurt, we're going to do roasted root vegetables he said oh i bet that'll mean parsnips i said absolutely it will my mother's favorite vegetable in the world they're not bad no, they're not terrible what does that taste like it's a sweet like milder than a carrot but sweeter than a carrot and easily peeled and this fancy new Peeler works quite well, but remember the old kind of rattly ones work better. Or maybe it's just because it's been around so long and it's trained my, to my hand. Rutabaga. Now, that's hard to cut, so. No, I'm going to use a different knife. Knives. I use that thing when people get a little round at well, here, you can use this knife. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
works easily as very easily now it's flat and a person can use uh, one of those knives not that little bitty one this Is one there... you want to use yeah, this one that one works better a paring knife works even better but I should have done this before I uh... and a little paring knife is very stable in your hand And someone said to me, you get a fair amount of the flesh with that. And I said, yes, I do. Turn up. And before I, I did peel all of these with a little paring knife, the ones that you'll be eating. I peeled them, I cut them into wedges, and I did cook them a bit before I put them in the oven to brown. These I just cut, put them in the oven to brown with butter, and they came out nicer. Yeah. So my instructions say boil first, don't necessarily do that. And of course, what do I do with the uh, onion skin? You wrap uh, eggs for Easter. Oh, no, I don't, but that's a good thought. That's yeah. how my grandma colored her eggs oh. years ago. Wrap them onion skins. Well, I, I learned from Lee 62 years ago. Okay. For Easter, they make um, cascarones. They open the top of the egg, shake it out, and, and then dye the eggshell, fill it with confetti, and then put tape or something on top, and then break them on everybody's head. Good luck. Yeah. And that works great. And it is just paper confetti. Good Lord, not glitter. Can you imagine? That would be horrible. Yeah. You do and that to the people you, when you go to their yeah, house that you yeah. don't want to come back to. I was hoping to get enough <laughs> empty eggshells to do that for you here today, but um, I couldn't get enough. That's 50. I don't. Yeah, I can only hope they have this much energy. You're helping me save? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. And I always cut it in half. It's just easier to maneuver. Well, here. I'll let you do some peeling and cutting. You oh, know I'll how peel. to do that. You're sure. a cooker. Well, <laughs> my wife called me that at one time, but yeah. Down here we have celery root pickles. Celery root, grocery store, or celeriac is the other name. And what do we want to do? Celery root. Celeriac, C E L E R, it's in your. Yep, right. And Kurt said, Are you going to do the only root vegetable he likes is celery root pickles, like your grandmother made? My grandmother used to make them, yeah. So I made a couple styles. They're not, neither one of them is what your grandmother made. They're close. They're close? The pickle one is close. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. And can see I cut it into chunks and then it's a sugar vinegar you see that and I had it marinating about four days the one I gave to you I had been marinating <laughs> longer and it became more firm so then I took a lot of those and I cooked them in the brine until they were soft and they were better weren't they yeah they were good yeah. yeah, so if your celery root pickles are too tough, just cook them along with the sugar and vinegar. And I must say, it took almost 35 to 40 minutes to get them tender, and they were already in pieces. Underused vegetable. Right. Have you, who, el who here has ever e eaten celery root or celeria? <laughs> okay, all right, yes. Oh, that's a great idea. Cel cream of celery root soup. Wow. Oh, yeah. Any questions here, or should we get the food? I think we'll get the food. I think they want the food. All right. Wait till you see these vegetables. <laughs>